For our afternoon session, we're going to start out with the uh, panel discussion with the civil, civilian prisoners of war. And we have a few uh, persons here that uh, uh, will be coming up on stage. What I'd like to do now is have them come up to the stage. We have uh, Sasha Jensen, the panel and panelists Francine Bostrom, Roy Doolan, Iron Hetch, and John Rehm. If you would kindly come up here, please. By the way, we have uh, Consuela Watts and Claire McHugh uh, escorting Sasha. Um, uh, they're the granddaughters of Connie. And uh, what I'd like to do now is uh, quickly go through a bio of each of these uh, persons. Sasha Jensen was born in Manila and raised in her grandfather's sugar plantation in Colomba, Laguna. During World War II, Sasha and her family were captured by the Japanese and incarcerated in Santo Tomas. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we're lacking. Okay, technical difficulty. Hold on, please. Pam, is there a chair that we can bring down to the stage, please? Going back to Sasha, Sasha was one of the principal participants in the PBS production, The War, a popular and historic Ken Burns documentary. She is vice commander of the Bay Area Civil Expow organization in California and writes for its journal Beyond the Wire. Next up, uh, I want to introduce John Ream. John was born in the Philippines in 1934 in Baguio City. Um, he and his family are relocated now in San Francisco in 1945. Um, uh, going back to the war, on December 28, 1941, he and his family and the American civilians in Baguio were ordered by the Japanese Imperial Army to march from Brent School to Camp John Hay, where they were remained incarcerated until 1942. They were then moved to Camp Holmes, located in the outskirts of Baguio, and remained there in custody until December 1944, where they moved to the old Bilibid prison camp in Manila until their liberation on February 4th, 1945. Our next participant is Mr. Roy Doolan, who was born in Manila, Philippines, where he spent over three years with his family and other civilians in Santo Tomas prison camp under the Japanese during World War II. In 2015, he published a book on his war experiences, which uh, most of you, I'm sure, have seen it there at the front desk. Um, my life in a Japanese prison camp during World War II. Leaving the Philippines at age 12, he and his family settled in Hillsburg, California. Roy is a graduate in economics from Reed College in Portland, Oregon. He received his MBA in accounting from Cornell University. Um, following 30 years of government employment, he joined the law firm of Seidemann and Bancroft, where he retired in 2002. Irene Hetch was born, also born in the Philippines. She was nine years old when she was interred with her family at Santo Tomas University during World War II. Her experiences during the war made an indelible impression of her, on her as she pursued her degrees in history from Radcliffe University of Rochester and the University of Washington. She served in various academic positions as assistant dean at Lewis and Clark College in Oregon, dean of the college at Mary Baldwin College of Virginia, dean of the School of Liberal Arts, and Sciences at San Sangamon State University, President of Wells College in Aurora, New York, and Senior Associate at the American Council on Education. Last, we have Francine Bostrom, born in the Philippines also. She was only five years old when the Japanese Army came to her home and took her family to Camp Homes in Baguio, where they were held as civilian prisoners. Then became prisoners of the Japanese in various camps throughout the Philippines for over three years. Listen to these names. Santo Tomas, Barrio, Benefit, 
Los Banos, Happy Life Blues. We were all aware of who we were and what was happening to us minute by minute. Hunger took the lead. They were executions, seven in Santo Tomas alone. Disease, bombings, and shellings by the enemy. But back in the States, in our country, no one knew what was happening. And today, imagine, 70 years after the end of that war in 1945, most of America and the world still don't know of our shared history in the Philippines. The Battle of Manila, liberation of prison camps, the Bataan March of Death, no one knew. When I was maturing into parenthood, I eagerly perused my children's history books. Well, guess what? I found absolutely nothing about our experiences. Being a grandparent later on, I followed looking at my grandchildren's book. Well, nada, sip. And today, as a great grandmother, I would like to leave you with these thoughts. Please pay attention. It is not too late to teach about U.S. and Philippine history during World War II. By not doing so, it would be a travesty to omit such an important part of our history. <coughs> Turning your back on thousands of us who suffered and died during the war, in and out of the camps, in the name of freedom and in the good name for our country. We serve both of our countries in our own way. This last week, I just buried my younger brother and sister who were three months old and three years old at the beginning of the war. My three-year-old sister suffered from PTSD. Not a real word then, but still a very real condition. During the years in camp and later in life, throughout her whole life, she ended up as a street person, as a paranoid schizophrenic. Was she alone? not on your life. I personally knew too many of these victims, victims of all ages. Well, one victim is too many. Residuals of war is the reality. These US civilians and others should not have died in vain, at least without the recognition they deserve by telling their story. Well, perhaps it is not too late. Perhaps it is not too late. Maraming maraming salamat.